Python Chapter 9, Lesson 3. With this program, we're going to take a new look at the Math Tutor program that we created back in Chapter 5 and redo this program with a Math Tutor class. So let's review the Math Tutor program. This was done back in Chapter 5, and if you've saved your URLs, I encourage you to go ahead and open your program from math, the Math Tutor program from Chapter 5 and take a look at your code. Review what you did back at that time. In Chapter 5, we were doing structured programming with functions. We were just learning about using parameters and arguments. So we were making sure that we divided our program up into several functions to make each chunk of code as small as possible and to avoid duplication. The output might have looked something like this. Now for structured programming, we followed an algorithm. So here's an algorithm for doing the math tutor program. We wanted to generate a random number for the type of problem. So we had three types of problems, so we needed a random number between one and three. We generated two random numbers for the problem, and I think we just used, for the most part, one to ten. We got the answer from the user, and we used an if statement for this because we had to figure out what type of problem it was before we got the answer. Then we had to get the actual answer. Once again, this was an if statement. Then we used another if statement to determine if the answer was correct. We printed a message, correct or incorrect, and we showed results. Our code might have looked something like this. So we've got our get answer, our get equation, our math equation. Everything is chunked into small functions. Each function does its own part. We've gotten rid of most duplication, and we've got lots of parameter and arguments. So our main function called math equation, math equation called the other ones, and we have several if statements. So we did avoid duplication and we've taken our algorithm and just divided it up into little chunks. And this works pretty good, but if we have a long algorithm or the potential for a lot of duplication, it can get complicated and it can be a little bit difficult to go back and make changes. So today we're going to take a look at this program and how we might do it with a class. We're going to start over, so we're not going to try and modify the program that you already did. We're going to start fresh. We are going to create a class for the math tutor. So think about the instance variables that the class will need. So when we create this class and its own entity, what will it need to complete these math tutor program problems? We also need to think about the behaviors of the class. So we're going to start off pretty simple, and then we're going to add some things to it. So right now, at our very beginning, we're going to start with just one instance variable our math tutor class is going to need to keep track of all the problems that you could correct. So we're going to have a correct variable that's going to be like our counter. The main behaviors that need to happen in this math tutor class is it needs to add, subtract, and multiply. Remember we didn't do division because it was difficult to get the exact answer. Then we need to be able to return back to the main program the correct, the number of correct, so we'll have a get correct, and also we might as well go ahead and throw in the percent so we can tell them the percentage of the right. We're going to start off with these behaviors and once we get going in our class we'll be able to add some more things and add some more methods and take out from our main program and in the end it'll look quite a bit different and we'll do the exact same thing. So let's get into Code Sculptor and we're going to start a new program for our Math Tutor class. So we're here in Cold Sculptor. Let's start a new program. Go ahead and put all your data at the top that you need to, your comment block. We're going to call this Math Tutor class. And then it's good to put the date. So you have all the important information. We are going to be using random numbers. So right at the top, let's go ahead and import random. Get that out of the way so we don't forget about it later on and get some kind of error. And we're going to start our class. We're going to start with a capital letter, remember that rule, Math Tutor. And we're also going to start with our constructor, which is our init. So I've got def, and then underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, and we always have to have self. Okay, we're not going to pass any parameters in it this time. We're going to use one instance variable called correct, and I always have to start with self, and its initial value is going to be zero. Okay, so we've got the beginning, we've got our constructor there that's going to happen automatically when we create an instance of this class. And now let's start with the behaviors that we want. So one of them is going to be add. I'm just going to call it add, and right now we're going to pass in from the main program two parameters, x and y, 
that are going to be the actual problem. We're going to come back and modify this later, but we're going to start like this. So I've got two numbers, x and y, and the first thing I want to do maybe is show what the math problem is so I can get answer from the, from the user, get the actual answer, and then compare to see if they are the same. So let's just create the math problem. I'm going to make a string variable called math problem. And it's going to, I'm going to actually use the words, well, I could put math problem in front or I could just create the problem. So I have to make everything into a string. So str my x plus, and then I'm going to make this, this is an addition. So space plus space, and then my plus, and I'm going to make my y a string. And I'm going to go ahead and put the equals. The spaces around it. So I'm going to form my math problem. Everything here is strings, and I'm assigning this entire string to a variable called math problem. Just going to make it easy to, to do this. If I use it one, create the variable one time, then I can use this string wherever I need to. So I'm going to get the answer from the user, and I've got the math problem right there. So I'm going to have to change it to an integer. And I'm going to use the input statement. Instead of having to type that whole string, I can just use math problem. So it saves myself a little bit of time, makes my code easier to read if I go ahead and have the string variable for that whole math problem. I might want to find out what the actual answer is as well, and that's going to be x plus y. And now I can compare the two. So if answer equals equals actual, what do I want to happen? Or well, maybe I want to print a message like correct. And I also want to increment my counter. So self.correct plus equals 1. Okay, well, what if it's not correct? Well, I might want to print a message something saying something like incorrect. And then I can say what the right answer is. So I've got math problem again. I gotta make sure that I'm matching my quotation marks here. And then I can print what the actual answer is. STR actual. So I can say that it's incorrect, print the math problem, and print the answer. All this takes place in add. It's fairly straightforward, and this is the behavior that I want to happen in my math tutor for the instance. Now I can do something very similar to this for subtract and for multiply. So the only difference is going to be where I have a plus, I'm going to put a minus or a times and do that a couple places. And I've got my other two uh, behaviors, my other two methods. So go ahead and stop the video and create your other two methods. Do subtract and do multiply and then turn back on the video and we'll compare and make sure you have everything right. Okay, how did you do? Do you have your constructor and then do you have three methods, add, subtract, and multiply? You pretty much could copy and paste your add and just make the little changes to minus and to times. We've got our behaviors. Now we want to do a couple more uh, methods before we actually start our main program. We want to do one that's going to return the count. I'm going to call this get uh, correct always have myself in there. Oh, and I forgot to put them in here, so I'm going to come back real quick. Hopefully you caught that before I did, that all of these methods need to have the self parameter. We would have an error sooner or later if we didn't get this. So we're going to have self right here and get correct, and all I'm going to have to do is return myself dot correct. Okay. And then we're going to do the percent. It's going to be pretty similar. Get percent. But I do need some additional information. I need to know how many problems. So I can take correct and I can divide by the number of problems. So I'm going to pass in a parameter here. Kind of like I did here and here. I passed in an X and Y. I'm going to pass in the number of problems. And then I can return. And I'm going to have to just do my math a little bit. I'm going to have myself dot correct. I'm going to multiply it by 100.0, so I'm going to make it a float, and then divide by number. I can get my percent. 
So I've got all these behaviors, these methods happening here, and I've got my instance variable. This is pretty much what a class is going to look like, where the work is going to happen here inside the class. And now we're ready to start our main program. Let's go ahead and put in some comments here to divide up our program. So this is going to be my class section. And then I'm going to come down here and let's do a main program section. So you do have these two separate entities here. So let's define our main function. And what does our main function need to do? Well, it's going to get those random numbers and it's going to call the correct method and it's going to show the results. Okay, so first of all, we might ask the user how many problems. So let's just get the number. How many math problems? We're just going to use a simple for loop here. Okay, so for x in range number. And now I'm going to need to get some random numbers kind of like we're following our algorithm from before. We need a random number for which type of problem, add, subtract, multiply, and then we need a couple random numbers for the actual problems. So first I'm going to have choice and random.randint and I just have one, two, or three. And then I'm going to have my x and it's going to be random.randint and I'm going to use one to ten and the same thing for y. Okay, so I've got all the basic information I need. And now I can just use an if statement for the choice and call the correct method. One thing I haven't done yet is created my instance of the class. So we really need to do that kind of near the beginning. Let's call it problem. And it's going to be an instance of math tutor. Okay, so I've got my instance, and then once I determine what problem it is, I'm going to use this instance to invoke a method. Okay, so if choice equals equals one, I want to do the addition. So I'm going to have problem dot add. I'm going to pass in x and y. If choice equals equals two, I'm going to take my instance and I'm going to invoke subtract. I pass in x and y. And if choice equals 3, then I'm going to take my problem instance and I'm going to multiply, passing in x and y. So my main problem, my main function there is pretty simple. And it's going to just invoke the correct method, come up into the class, do all the work, and then I need to get my answers back. So after my for loop, I'll just do a quick print, and then I want to get the results. So I can do print number of correct answers, and then I'm going to invoke my method. So problem dot get correct, okay, and that's going to print the answer. And then I can do the result, the percent. So you come here to another print statement, percentage of correct answers. And once again, I'm going to invoke my method, problem dot get percent. Now percent does have a parameter number. I'm going to pass in number. That's the whole thing. That's all there is to the main problem, the main function. Let's call this and see if we have any errors. I just forgot my little colon there. Okay, so how many math problems? Let's just do five. And I'm going to keep them pretty simple. I'm going to miss one on purpose, so I'm going to say 6 instead of 7. Okay, 
Now I've got a little problem that says math problem. It's not defined. Did I spell? I spelled it wrong. So let's just keep those. Fix that. Everything else is working great. I'll do five problems. I'm going to get this one wrong on purpose. Oh, I did it again. I probably have to go through and fix it everywhere. Hopefully you haven't done the same typing mistakes as me. Okay, now we should be good to go. So five, two, I'll get this one wrong on purpose. Okay, so it's showing me all the corrects. It's showing me the incorrect with what the right answer was. And it's got my percents. Everything's working great. You could be really happy with this and say you'd be ready to turn it in. And you could be. But let's just take a closer look. Is there more that we can do in our class? The more that we can do in our class is would be really good. And the less we can do down here. So maybe one thing we can do is take out the randomness from the main program. Why not do this in our class? So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to define another method for get random. And I am going to pass in, of course I need the self parameter. I'm also going to pass in what is the lowest number of my range and the highest number of my range. But I'm just going to return it. So return and I'm going to have random.randint low and high. So whenever I need a random number, I can inside my class, I can just invoke this method with a low and high and return a number. Well, I want to do this in every problem. So instead of passing in X and Y, let's just get it right here in our class. There's no reason why not. So I'm going to come into these three methods and take out the parameters. And I'm going to put in a call to the method. So just before I find out what the math problem is, I'm going to get an X equals, and now I'm going to call self.getRandom. And my low is going to be 1 and my high is 10. So that's pretty simple. And let's do this for Y. So instead of passing it in from the main program, I can generate the random numbers right here in my class using a method. And a method can call another method, so I'm going to do that. And now I've got my X and Y, and it's all self-contained right here. I can duplicate this work in my other two. So I'm going to take this, just copy it, paste it right there. Same thing here. Now when I call these, when I invoke the methods, I do not need to pass in parameters anymore. So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to take out these two lines of code, which I basically just put in my method. Let's run this and see if we still get everything good. Let's do five problems again. It's being pretty simple. Okay, so I got them all correct. Everything shows good here. And we've just simplified our main function and we've just added some more methods. Everything's still really small and divided up. Well, is there more we can do? I can't really take out much more from main. That's about as simple as I can make it. But if I come in here to my three main methods here, add, subtract, and multiply, I do see a little bit of duplication. All three of them have something like this. The rest of it, you know, is, is uh, kind of specific, but all of them have the same kind of thing right here, where it's comparing answer to actual. You know, this is the exact same code three times. Well, if it's the same code three times and I've got duplication, why not make it a method? So let's do that. We're going to come in here. We're going to create a method called um, check answer. And check answer is going to need some information. It's going to need the actual, and it's going to need the answer. Now I could pass them in as a parameter, but let's kind of rethink this for a second. Another thing that we could do is just make some more instance variables. If I'm using answer and actual a lot, instead of keeping it local, I can just go ahead and let's make these 
some instance variables. So I'm going to have self.answer and its initial value will be 0 and self.actual and its initial value will be 0 as well. So now I've got these variables that are being used by the class and I can use them kind of any time just like I did with correct. So I'm going to come down here where it says answer and I'm going to make this self.answer and self.actual because now I'm referring to these instance variables. So I'm going to do that in all three. So self.answer and self.actual. And I'm going to do it here. Self.answer and self.actual. Now I could do it for math problem. I'm not going to at this point time, but on your own, I encourage you to go ahead and try it. So I've got my answer, my actual. Now I can take this code here. I'm going to put it in check answer. So let's just get my indenting right. Now is there anything else I need? So instead of answer here, I'm going to have self dot. Oops, spell correctly. And instead of actual, I need self dot actual. But I do need math problem here. So right now, since I have not made it an instance variable, I'm going to pass it in. So this needs self, and right now it needs math problem. You can change this if you make it an instance variable. We'll do it this way for now, just to kind of show you some different options. Now that I've got this, after I find the problems, the last thing I need to do is invoke this method. So I'm going to call self.checkAnswer and pass in math problem as an argument. And that should do all the work. So I can simplify this again. I'm going to take all this out and just invoke the method. So I am avoiding some duplication here in my methods just like I would try to do in my functions. Okay, so our code looks even better. Got lots of methods now all working together. I don't have to change my main problem at all. I don't have to change add or subtract or multiply here. My public interface is pretty much staying the same. I just made some changes inside my class. So let's try it again. Let's do four problems. Let's get at least one of them wrong. Okay, so if I made a little typing mistake, you want to make sure you fix this. All right, so anytime I have something like actual, I need to change this to self. And thankfully, I only have to do it one place because now instead of having it in three different methods, I have it just in one. Let's see if I forgot anything else anywhere along the way. So let's do four problems. Let's get one wrong on purpose. Okay, everything's working great. It still looks the same here. So if somebody was just running the program, they would have no idea that I made all these different changes. Everything's working great. Our code is nice and tight. And this is a way to do the math tutor program. Instead of a whole bunch of functions and passing in parameters, we made a class with a lot of methods. Each method is just a few lines long. Everything works together with some instance variables. And this makes our code really easy to run. And it's going to make it really easy to modify. So I could keep making some changes to this. And I encourage you, before you turn this program in, are there some other changes that you can think of? Either here in your class or maybe here in your main program. Do you, can you put this in a loop so you could run it again and again? And if you are going to run it again and again, maybe you have a second counter that keeps track of not just the correct answers for this one time, but maybe you can get it so that, that you have a correct overall. 
So I encourage you to accept the challenge to put this in a loop and have it run more than one time and modify your class. So it's going to keep track of the number correct for this run, but also total of all the different times that it gets run. Then we're going to take a look at this again later for maybe like a two-player uh, two game and how we might have two instances. So just get this one going nice and good right now, and we'll come and revisit this again in, a, in another lesson.